it's time for our favorite U.S. report regular back for another year. Former White House Chief of Staff Mick Mulvaney. Mick, an awful lot has happened over the past several weeks since we last spoke, but I want to talk firstly about the new GOP House Speaker, Kevin McCarthy. Quite the battle getting him into the chair. How did it happen? How do you think he's going? And what promises did he make to finally get over the line? Yeah, James, it's great to see you. Happy 2023, and congrats on the hour-long program. I'm looking forward to this year. And it's off to a bang here in the U.S. Um, the McCarthy election took place, I think it was January 3rd or 4th. Took him 14 or 15 rounds to get elected Speaker of the House. That's a first in over 100 years in my country. What did he have to give to these 20 Republican holdouts? Not very much. Um, there are certain promises regarding committee assignments, certain uh, promises regarding things they will vote on, some agreements regarding where they'll start the discussion on the budget. And the big one was really how many people it would take to file a motion to kick Kevin out of the speaker's chair. Uh, Nancy Pelosi had it at a majority of the majority party, so several hundred votes. Um, Kevin had proposed to take it down to five, and the holdouts got it down to one, which was the rule that had been for over 200 years when we when John Boehner left when I was in Congress, that any one person could move to um, kick the speaker out, and that's back to where, where the rules are now. So at the end of the day, it was ugly. It was really difficult to be there. I was in the chamber for most of the week, um, but it got done at the end of the day, and Kevin didn't give away that much. And you just mentioned the committee assignments right there, and I'm really curious about what these committees are going to be looking at. How much momentum with their slim majority do you think they're going to be able to really get um, on these investigations that they want to have, not just into the Biden family, but also into just the general sort of state of the government and allegations that it has been used and weaponized against conservatives? Is this a lot of talk, or are these committees really going to be able to get somewhere with this sort of thing, Mick? No, these committees are going to be real. There's no question about that. If you ask the question about, is Kevin going to have difficulty keeping the party together on legislation, I think the answer is yes. So things in the debt ceiling, spending bills, et cetera. He's going to have a hard time keeping those folks together. But the Republicans really are united behind this idea of doing these investigations. Keep in mind, some of these things are very popular. It, it goes well beyond just the Hunter Biden laptop. Folks want to know if critical race theory is really being taught in the schools. They want to know if the federal government is encouraging that. That's a bipartisan issue in Washington, D.C. They want to know if the um, federal government is being used to attack its citizens. They want to know if the FBI and the CIA are spying on citizens. Those are bipartisan things. So I think Kevin's going to be in good shape when it comes to the investigations. Legislating is going to be very, very difficult, on the other hand, with such a narrow margin in the U.S. House. Yeah, well, with that narrow margin, one of the things we're seeing a lot of stories about here in Australia, Mick, is, um, you know, questions about hitting a budget ceiling, the spending, uh, and all of that. Is there any prospect, because I know some on the left are kind of almost salivating about it here, that the Republicans are going to hit a wall, there'll be a government shutdown that they can use against the Republicans like they did uh, back during the Clinton administration? Yeah, I don't think there's any chance. We've never defaulted on the debt before. That is simply not going to happen. There'll be a great wailing and gnashing of teeth. And certainly the media here love to make fun of Republicans on these particular issues, but it's not going to happen. You'll see a lot of, of worrisome uh, press reporting about it, but we're not going to uh, breach the debt ceiling and we're certainly not going to default. There may be discussions about ordinary government shutdowns. That's different from the debt ceiling. An ordinary government shutdown simply means that Congress hasn't appropriated money for that year. It's a different issue. We had a, a government shutdown of, of about 45 days when I was uh, President uh, Trump's chief of staff and OMB director, and nobody really cared at the next election. So it's not an issue that drives voters. So, yeah, there'll be great wailing and gnashing of teeth and a lot of energy, but Washington will still plod on in much the same way it has for the last several years. Uh, well, hooray for that. But I want to talk about Joe Biden now and his uh, approval rating. They're acting in the Biden administration like they've got it all together, you know, like the Republicans are in disarray, like they've had all these great legislative achievements. But if you look at the polls, Biden is down to around 40 percent, the lowest of his presidency. Um, I want to ask you about this document scandal. Is that having an impact on this or are people more concerned about, you know, the cost of living? I keep seeing people talking about eggs and all sorts of just staple items that are costing them a fortune at the grocery store. What is driving uh, Joe Biden's poll numbers and hit, hit a negative direction? 
You know, it sounds crazy, but the documents are actually having an impact. Keep in mind, Biden had a pretty good December and November. In fact, he's had a pretty good run of it since the midterm elections. The Republicans dramatically underperformed and Biden was sort of on this trajectory of moving back sort of into the, in, into the black when it comes to his, his approval numbers. Um, and that was with inflation at, at, at new highs. That was at eggs being expensive. That was at gas being expensive. The downturn that you've seen in the last couple of weeks are tied to these documents. And I think there's a reason for that. The press beat up so hard on Donald Trump on these documents issues. Um, Democrat lawmakers beat up so hard on Trump on these document issues that Trump had at Mar-a-Lago. They've almost been forced to say critical things about Joe Biden in the press. So the mainstream press here now is beating up on Joe Biden for the first time in two years. They were defending him on inflation, defending him on prices, defending him on, on his uh, uh, conduct of the war in, in Ukraine. But it's this document thing that they've got no place to hide. So they've actually, in that mainstream press, started to run negative stories about uh, about Biden in front of people who haven't seen them for two years. And that's what I think is actually driving his numbers down right now. And what do you make of just the various questions? And I know we don't know a lot, but about you know how this story made it out into the press uh, in the first place. Was this a strategic leak by his allies trying to manage the story? Or are there people out there who are trying to send the president a message that maybe it's time to think about 2024 and maybe not running again? Yeah, it's a great question. And both camps, so to speak, sort of have evidence on their side. These documents are actually the first ones were discovered before the midterm elections and the story didn't come out. So some folks are saying that, you know, there were uh, forces at hand to try and help protect Biden and help him in the midterms. But now that you get this slow drip drip of information coming out about new documents, you know, a couple times over the weekend now and for the first time attacking the president in the press, it is fueling that argument that there are people here who are using this as an excuse to sort of nudge Joe Biden out. Remember, it was widely perceived he wasn't going to run sort of late last year and that he had that good midterm result. He had a good December and he was really sort of trending in the right direction and talking more and more about running. And you have to wonder and people in Washington on both sides are absolutely wondering is this recent turn against him in the press driven by elements that want to see him retire and not run again? So it's a fascinating sort of a subplot in Washington. Mick Mulvaney, thank you so much for your insights. Can't wait to keep speaking about this all through the years.